Okay, if you have a question, you can, okay, my sister here. Go ahead. What is the cost of utilizing your services? And how long, mm -hmm. is the question, right. and how long approximately do you think it will take? Well, because of the organizers of the program, uh, I, I spoke with Divi uh, a few days ago, about a week ago. Usually, for those who are living outside of the African continent, outside of Ghana, it is 250 US dollars for application in the processing. That is for membership. There is no charge for the application for citizenship. But we have a prerequisite. The prerequisite is you must be a member of our organization so we can take you forward. In the second stage, we will give you the citizenship application and proceed. So in talking with Davi, we decided to bring it down to I believe it's 150 US for, for those of you who are living outside. And that's the first part of your question to answer. The second part, how long does it take? One of the things that have to be understood that it is the preserve uniquely of the president of the nation to decide who gets citizenship when they get it and who doesn't. But you're not talking to a deputant. That's the good thing about it. By bringing me here, they have resourced me out as being the number one organization that has been working with government and have a track record of getting, and not only getting the citizenship, but actually breaking the ice and showing the pathway with a narrative, you understand what I'm saying, an initiative on how to get it. So those applicants who come with us, it is a, a high percentage that will get their citizenship. But how long, it could be a matter of months. But in during the interim, you just get your house in order, you are communicating with our organization if you decide you want to come and visit, it's our responsibility by virtue of you being a member to assist you in coming to uh, up, upgrade or update your visa if you need that done or to get you a uh, resident permit if you need that. So until the date while your application is moving in the bureaucratic system, could be a couple of months, and then when it comes, we notify you. You got to be here in the right place at the right time in order to do the interview and we and the the application apparatus that we're pursuing. It is bypassing the draconian laws. So you're not going in a situation where you're talking about having to speak the local dialect. Uh, because it's, it's by executive order, executive order of a pending of the president's signature. And that bypasses everything. And then the other factor that you should understand again, that if you're trying to do business without this, as David pointed out to you earlier, the Ghana uh, pro, uh, Business Promotion Promotional Council that they have here. I mean, Ghana Investment Promotion. Yeah, Investment Promotional Council. I mean, you got to come up with a million dollars for you to do business here as a foreigner. And I'm sorry to say, even though you're African people, but we here will look at you as a foreigner. And all of the laws would apply to you as an alien and a foreigner. But once you become a citizen, all of that is passed. What does it cost you as a citizen now to um, do business? Um, zero. As opposed to a million, a uh, million. I don't, I, as a citizen, you don't have to um, go through the, um, the process of registering with a country. Every country has its investment laws. So Ghana has investment laws. If you want to open a business here, if you're not a Ghanaian, you have to qualify by bringing in so much money into the country. But as a Ghanaian, that's eliminated. Once you get your citizenship, you can come in and do business um, anywhere in the country. So you just have to start up a you business. Can, right, you can start up a business. Right. You go to the registration, you have rights. Right. You can go and get your property registered. That's it. You know? Yes, ma'am. Just to clarify, are you speaking about a million US dollars? Yes. Yes, that's for the um, so called foreigner. The Chinese, the Japanese, you know, anyone that, you know, that can come here, they have the minimum. It used to be $10,000 with the Ghanaian partner, but each, each year the doctor said things changes. So that's why this change has come for your, for your right of 
right of return and your citizenship right, this is going to eliminate a lot of, lot of uh, uh, bureaucracy and allow you to be here uh, forever without having to worry about any of those. And there are many obstacles. And one of the things that I could tell you also, if I may uh, interject this, that during the interim period, that those of you who want to rush forward and do investment, you may have a small amount of money, you want to put it into something, because there's so many opportunities here in business, mm -hmm. where you can look to your brethren and your sister for who are here, you know, already a citizen. And you, if you feel confident, you can partner with them. Mm -hmm. And they will be able to cover you until you get your papers straight, okay? And by you being a member of Ministry of the Future, and we're pursuing getting your citizenship, we assist you with all the amenities. You know what I mean? Assistance on your legal status. Even, I mean, we got families here right now over the last three to four weeks. I've taken a, 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 a mother, father with five children. We get them a three-bedroom house. They just got it. They, they just given up everything in America. They brought their children, and they're here. They're refugees. Yes, <laughs> but we we've gotten them. We're we, refugees. Yeah, we've gotten them. Uh, if you look at some of the look, <laughs> let me tell you, we got buildings and apartments here that would make Beverly Hills and Ball. I lived in California. Lots of Ball and Hills look like shady, shabby nonsense. <laughs> and for two hundred. I mean, Two bedrooms, Italian tile floors, air conditions, state of the art. Two bedrooms, two hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's all it is, two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Now, yeah. is that buying it or renting it? No, I, I don't. I don't suggest you buy no house. When you come here, don't jump into the water buying no property here. Come here and rent. Rent for about a year to get your bearing straight on what you're doing. Then you take off and you do your investment. Great advice. Yeah, right. and I ask you and I tell all of my clients, move in apartment complex, and we got the state of the art. I'm not joking, we got the state of the art. So you can have security, right. security with other tenants in there. You understand me? Go ahead, my brother. You guys help with the, um, like finding houses and stuff like that? We help with all of that because there are so many scams. Ghana is the capital of land scams in Africa. Maybe the capital of land scams in the world. And if you think that fast talking Eddie in New York can sell you the London Bridge, you ought to see fast talking Kwame here. <laughs> oh, my brother! Kwame! Welcome, 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 welcome! Oh, I miss you so much! But you got to know, and we know that. You, you ain't gonna put that over on me. No, 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 no. We don't deal with people like that. So we have a situation here, and we're trying to open up right now what we call a mini embassy. We got to have our own business development cultural center with guest houses inside the compound. We're working on that now. So Charlie, to get with us, you're on the right track. And I'm saying that not just to be talking, we have the track record to prove it. You do. I have a question. If I were to be awarded my citizenship, would it make it easier on my adult children to then get their citizenship, and or should we all apply at the same time? And uh, there is in the Ministry of the Interior citizenship laws here, uh, if the parent, one of the parents or the parents get citizenship, it automatically opens up the door for you to file for the children to get their citizenship. Adult children? Yes, even adult children. Minor children. Well, I'm speaking of minors in this case, but if you have adult children, then you bring them along with you. While you apply, let them submit an application as well. But if you get your citizenship and you want your offspring, your, 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 your children, and they happen to be adult, then you use the same rule of thumb. You are a citizen. And I want my son or daughter to come under me as a citizen, and that be, and you get consideration on that. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, sir. Two things. So um, there is an option for dual citizen, dual citizenship. I want to yes. make that clear. And then um, it sounded like with the interim, the application process, we have to come back here and be interviewed at a specific time. 
Yeah, the, the thing is this, uh, so uh, I, I want to be straightforward with you on that, is the, once the citizenship application is in the system, as I said earlier, only the president of the nation has to preserve to say when they're going to approve it. But usually, you, you could be talking about anywhere from about three months, blah, blah, blah. Now, uh, the, this government is in power right now. They have set up a board, uh, a, a, a sitting board to vet, a vetting. In other words, the applicant. Because I want to stress to you right now, and this was told to me by government in February of this year when I was at the ministry. They now have changed uh, somewhat of the caliber of applicant that government is looking for. They see, and and I, I insist that we have priority by virtue of the facts I said a moment ago, the moral obligation. But it's not only moral. Moral doesn't buy it alone. But we're coming with moral and, if you will, economic obligations. Government is looking for Africans of the diaspora, number one, that has skills. Like, you know, you have skills. And most of my people, one way or another, we got skills. And they want to make sure that, you know, uh, you know, with many of our brothers and sisters, <coughs> by living in that environment, very hellish environment, you know, police records uh, we have, because many of our people have been incarcerated unjustly or what happened. Uh, this is a consideration that is given by our organization. That's why we are in a position to talk with government. And they know, they know now, as we've been telling them for years. And then with the killing of Floyd, uh, with the George Floyd, it just brought the point home. And they know it. So uh, this is what they're looking for. Now, if you happen to be in your residence in the U.S., but I say again, you must have a resident here. So why not? Open up an apartment here, even though your job is in the U.S. And we have many of our people who got dual citizenship, mind you, a whole family out of North Carolina. And, and when, when David got here, it's five. And four of them are living in North Carolina, but they have investment property here. So you get you a flat here and leave it, and, and, and we can help you to manage it. You understand what I'm saying? That is your resident address. You happen to be making your income in America. And you come and go, you come and go. That is the way you do it. You file your resident from here. You understand me? Now, when they call you for the interview, we on the ground here will try to notify you in ample enough time. Because I know you just can't be called tomorrow, then you drop everything, get on the airline and flower. But the government usually will let us know with a, a due process of time that they're going to have the interview. So the most important thing, make the move. Right. That's what you need to do. Our people are procrastinators. Right. Make the move and everything else will fall in place. Right. Yes. One question about securing the flat. Everything that I've seen so far about the rental mm -hmm. is up front. Like, they don't do month to month. Oh, yes. That is the situation here. And you have to understand the reason for that is that due to the fact the banking system here is not like it is in the United States. Mm -hmm. It is that the banks, and this is why you find Many foreigners, I'm going to get to your, your, your question and answer in a moment, but this is why you find many foreigners in African countries who are white, Arabs, uh, East Indian, because they have access to monies outside where their governments, and they have embassies to represent them. They can get short-term loans from the Arab Development Bank, or Arab Can. That's why you see white-looking Arab walking around here, the Lebanese, whatever, you're doing business, but the Ghanaian, the poor Ghanaian, he and she, small scale business or whatever, are confined to going to the Ghana Bank here. And then the banking system here usually and customarily will give a loan short term with interest rates. You understand what I'm saying? So property owners and house you know, owners find that to be difficult for them to develop their property. So a landlord that has property and they have nice out, they're putting, they're putting literally millions of cities uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars into that building. So they tell the tenant, if you want to rent, it could be anywhere, usually in customary. They will try to get, but the COVID-19, mind you, what I'm going to tell you, has <laughs> eroded that 
five year advance. Because if, if we got people that are out of work, they lost their job, so they're not asking for five years. So my my particular clients that we have, and, and like I tell you, we got a family with uh, three children, another one with five children, nice places. One year in advance, they will take it, one year. And as I say, a two bedroom flat, state of the art, and I'm not talking about no crap, I'm talking about something that most of our people in the States have never even lived in. And right here in Africa, $250 a month. Okay, we take the one last question and then we'll close out the section. Uh, yes, yes. Do you yes. have those information like where you are, those apartments and so forth? Excuse me? Any link to those apartments, as wise or who um, you can contact? Yes, uh, we have flyers. Let, let me just sit it before we close out. There are things that I put up for display here. Uh, as I started off to give you a historical background. And I think, you know, for you to have come to Ghana, take something back home with you, reflecting the fact that you've been here. And these wall hangings is representative of that. And that's what you see. And they're authentic. They have been commissioned by the National Commission on Culture since 1992. So you'll know, if you get one, you'll know who you are and where you come from. Because what you see here in Ghana today, we are DNA descendants of that. Now, we have literature here to tell you about the property, to tell you the services that we can render for you. And if while you are here, you want to go visit a flat, we can help you with that. And I would uh, entreat you and encourage you while you're here, have a free day where you can get with us and we can show you what we're talking about. Nice house not cramped up in the heart of Accra, but out toward the suburban area where the ocean, the air is clean, even beachfront property. Yes. Uh, uh, this questions. light this light here is blinding me. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I can't see. Two quick questions. Will the property that I purchased with Brother Bomani qualify me on my application? Yes. Okay, and the other oh I just I forgot to say yes. COVID yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So once again, I, I would uh, entreat you, we have the applications here. Okay. Those of you, after I finish, and we, uh, you can come up, get the application, and as I said, with Daveen, uh, we reduce because of the um, yes, growth of the group. Right. Yeah, and down from the 250 to 100. I remember the question. Right. Um, if, if we can call to come in for the interview, then we go back home. We have to come back in order to receive the... Um, oh, when you do the swearing in the ceremony. Swearing in, yeah, the yeah, swearing in ceremony. So we're looking at two more trips. Yeah, after. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, if you hear, right. set an example that uh, the interview, you make the interview, but you happen not to be here during the swearing in ceremony, but your certificate has already been registered and okay. stamped with the government. Okay. Okay. But I would encourage you, you know, this is Africa. Get back as soon as you can to grab that certificate. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and the ceremony too, because it's really wonderful to be able to be there with the president, and he gives you, uh, you know, the certificate, and then you shake his hand. Okay. I mean, it's like it's, it's a great welcome. I mean, let, let, let me add on what I mean to say, so you would know the benefit of this. Look, this is one thing I, I, I it's remiss of me I didn't say. It. One of the benefits of this is simply this: by you becoming a citizen of this country, it gives you a porthole opening economically to do business in right. all of the West African right. countries. 19, 19 countries. Then the African Union has already stamped what they call a continental passport. And the only way you can get the continental passport, you have to be a citizen of one of the African countries. So simply meaning to you, by you being a Ghanaian citizen, you have access to go anywhere in Africa and do business anywhere in Africa. And this is the future. The future of the world they know is here in Africa. There is no other virgin territory that is left other than Africa. So you should get in on the high table, on the ground, before the others come in and try to destroy it. And believe me, they are not joking. They, they are running, it's over here, they are giving Big money. So ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I would entreat you, Amakar, look at your heritage on where you have come from. 
look and take something back to the United States and let them know that you have been to the land of the year of return mm -hmm. and that you have come to the land where they have said you're beyond the return and you have come to the land where I am telling you you have a right to return. So take this back with you. Yes, my I sister. Have, as I'm looking at the poster, my heart keeps beating hard and hard because the Wakanda of Africa, is that the same um, ministry, like, I don't know what to call it, department, but creating the, like, diaspora village with the, the cultural training center, the housing, the... Well, that's, that's something different. That's something yeah, different. yeah, they, that's something there different. is a concept, right. that's a concept. Mm -hmm. but it has not been put on the ground yet. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What they're, talking about, right. yeah. what they're talking about up in the central region right. of yes. creating a Wakanda right. village. Right. Now this is mostly to show you your grassroots okay. on how and where your forebears have come from. Thank you. And to show you that Ghana, where you are today, is linked to ancient empires, not only talking about Ghana, Sudan, but I'm talking about what the very Bible that all of you or most of you, I would say, have read, right. supposedly have been revelations coming out of Israel. Well, the people that you see here were those people in that land called ancient Israel. So these are things you need to know. And I will entreat you again to try to patronize some of that. But most importantly, patronize becoming, try to start the process of becoming a Ghanaian citizen by picking up an application here. And if you don't want to do it for yourself, whatever reason you may have, my God, think about your children. Think about your grandchildren. Because time is short. You got to get up off the, off the pot and make a decision. Time is short. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that we should bring this to an end, but uh, I would like for, if there are any last minute questions or whatever you know what I mean. Well, we're going to do, we're just going to close out this session. And those that want to sign up for the citizenship, you can come to the table here. And then after, we can network a little bit. So again, we want to thank everybody. Uh, last but not least, I do have my book available. Uh, you might have seen it in the publication that we might have published, Black Guy to Invest in Africa. Yes, and then uh, we also have the herbs that we grow on our farm. We have a 50 acre farm, so we have herbs that can help you fight the COVID-19 when you go back. So uh, we grow these on our farm. Um, so again, we'd like to ask our bishop to come and um, close us out, and then we can, uh, we can all sign up for the, uh, the uh, citizenship.